uh, Yvonne Brathwaite Burke, and I'm a former member of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. I represented District 2. I was originally appointed to the board by a former governor, Jerry Brown, and I was appointed uh, to a seat where uh, District 4 supervisor retired just immediately without any notice. So they needed to find someone and I was appointed. I served for uh, the remainder of that term. I was not uh, re-elected. So I left the board and went into private practice. I'm an attorney. Gloria Molina! Hola, my name is Gloria Molina and I'm the supervisor of the first district of Los Angeles County. Today's culture clash word of the day is Jefita. Jefita well, certainly, uh, arriving at the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors was no different than when I arrived in the state legislature as being the first Latina and when I arrived in the Los Angeles City Council uh, as the first Latina. But, but here it was a little different because most of the supervisors really didn't support me and were very nervous and worried about me. And so it was kind of um, a chill that I received when I first got here. And I don't wanna say that it was just because I was a woman. I don't think it was as much of that, but it was because of the, net, the dynamics of my politics, some of the battles I had fought for, and kind of not upholding the status quo that politicians are comfortable with. What we did is we treated it as though we have a job to do, we've got to get to work, let's figure out what's going on here, how it's going to get done, and roll up our sleeves and get to it. Uh, when Supervisor Hahn retired, he talked to me and said, you know, we'd love to have you back on the board. And I said, well, you know, it's going to be a tough election after all of these years. Uh, I've been off the board and been out of politics. So he said, no, I think that you can do it. And I started out, I was able to get a lot of support, had a very difficult election against a very prominent opponent. And, uh, but fortunately I was elected and I served for 16 years. I uh, come from an immigrant uh, family, a working class family. Both of my parents were uh, members of unions trying to earn enough just to help their family get by. And I understood very early on in my life that government could actually be an instrument of good. I was very interested in how you can make policy by changing the rules not just advocating. And I learned a lot in the legislature and I knew that Zeb would be termed out uh, about six years after I was termed out of the Senate. So I thought, well, that, that would be a good way to continue what I had wanted to do most of my life, which was really to make policy work for people who couldn't make it work for themselves. I grew up in this political family. In fact, the day my mother brought me home from the hospital as a baby, my dad was planning his campaign to become a Los Angeles County supervisor. And he was there for 40 years. So literally, I spent the first 40 years of my life as the daughter of a Los Angeles County supervisor. So I always thought that someday I would also uh, go into public service. It seemed uh, like the thing our family cherished the most. Well, I've worked for the county for now 34 years. 
I began as a student intern working for Supervisor Mike Antonovich and was honored to serve as his chief of staff. And what motivated me is my love for the County of Los Angeles and truly um, the commitment that I have as a public servant to working with not only the 5th District but the county constituents as a whole. I think for me it was a couple things. Uh, one, it was an emotional response. I got angry. I got mad. It was during the Great Recession for the state of California. I was running Crystal Stair, the largest child development agency in the country. And the state was considering cutting a billion dollars out of the subsidized child care program. And I knew what that would do to our economy, to a parent, the working class parent's ability to go to work with a high level of confidence that their kids were safe and in a, in a nurturing environment. And so I went to the legislature to try to convince them that that wasn't the best wasn't in the state's best interest. Uh, and I didn't find enough people from my perspective who fundamentally understood what I felt LA County families were facing. And so I got mad enough to run for office myself. I think the greatest challenge for me was that this seat had not been open for 36 years. And there were a lot of people running for this office. So I really had to explain why I was the right person and why this was something uh, for me was not about me personally, it was about truly giving back. And uh, so it was a challenge, but it was also something that pushed me even harder um, to run harder because this is something that I've always wanted and um, I'm honored to be a part of. When I originally ran in 1994 for the State Assembly, uh, no gay person had ever gotten through even a primary, much less been elected to anything in the state legislature. But fortunately, since I had been a TV celebrity for about 25 years before that, uh, everybody knew my TV character from Dobie Gillis and they kind of liked her. Zelda Gilroy was smart. Uh, she was not popular, but she was strong and uh, kind of gritty, you know. Um, and so they, it was kind of like, gee, I don't like gay people, but I really like Zelda. Maybe I ought to think twice about this. And it was very educational, I think, for my constituents. Uh, and you just had to be who you were. I mean, I got death threats. Uh, I had to wear um, bulletproof vests when I went out to speak. Um, it was a really hard time. So if you want to know about challenges, those were challenges. So when I first ran for the Rio Hondo College Board of Trustees years ago, as a woman of color and probably one of the youngest members of the board at the time, the, the world uh, was very different at that time, it was dominated by mostly males. Uh, and I had uh, people doubting my skills, they thought I was too young, they didn't think I had enough experience. And they sometimes made me feel doubtful about myself. But um, again, I have to say that there were many more people who did support me and encouraged me to keep going and to believe in myself. And one thing I learned was that uh, if you surround yourself with good people, those people can help you and inspire you and help you gain the confidence that you need to get the job done. Um, as a woman, as a woman of color, a woman that came from the nonprofit sector, you know, many of us face the same challenges and it's documented, researched by any number of groups, including Center for the American Women in Politics at Rutgers. Um, it's, the, it's the challenge of fundraising. Uh, donors, including women, uh, will donate at, at higher uh, amounts to male candidates versus women. You know, we know women still earn pennies on the dollar compared to our male counterparts in the workforce. Women of color, even less. And that applies as we run for office. And so we really have to look at ourselves as a society. Are we really clear uh, and committed to supporting women in public office? When women run, we win. When I first ran for office, I had uh, just come out of a divorce. I was a single mother with three small kids. And it was like every other single mother, uh, I was balancing running for office as well as trying to take care of my family. My older brother, Jim, of course, was by then, uh, had been elected as the city attorney of Los Angeles, the city controller. 
of Los Angeles and he would become the mayor of Los Angeles. And my father always groomed him to be the heir apparent to politics uh, in Los Angeles. And my father assumed that I would probably be happily married and raise kids. Well, that really wasn't the path that I wanted. I had always thought about going into public service myself. I would say to the five women supervisors today, the same thing that my mother said to me is, you know, you're the first. Uh, I was the oldest of 10. And she said to me, you have to set the example of how well government can run when headed by five amazing women doing their job every single day. So my advice is keep an eye on what's going on. Make us proud every single day. You still gotta work as hard as anyone else, but really remember, you're setting the example for everyone. Really, not only here in LA County, but across the country. You have many different kinds of issues that no one really has prepared for, has knowledge of, and how you approach those issues. So I say to them, you have my prayers, you have my support, and I know that you have the abilities to address issues that has, have no history, no ability to call upon from the past, but certainly will have an impact in the future. As someone who truly is about uh, public service, I look forward to diversity not only from the standpoint of, of, of more female uh, department heads, but also diversity as it relates to really reflecting the true population of LA County and the diversity that we have within LA County. And with this board, I know there's no end of what we are going to do. And I'm excited to see what the future brings uh, over the next four years. It's not about partisan politics, it's about people. Absolutely, the number one issue is making sure that we can uh, put this virus behind us and then quickly move towards uh, pivoting towards recovery. And that means establishing a good economy that works for everybody. And I think that the board, in my opinion, is one of the more progressive boards of supervisors that I've seen in more than a century. Uh, with a crisis, I believe there's opportunity and we have a chance to move forward and not return to the status quo. And I believe that this board will not only make history as the first all-female board, but will also make a lot of progress as well. I believe government um, is here for us for times such as this. Uh, in the middle of a public health and economic pandemic, it's government who has a responsibility to stand in the gap. I wanna create, help create in LA County where you can own a home, raise your children, work, your kids can go to school, you can recreate all in your own neighborhood if that's what you so choose. That's the kind of LA County I want to grow old in and raise my own family in. Uh, I want to help um, put my thumbprint on creating for the next generation of county residents. We certainly have a, a pandemic that we are working our way through. We're gonna to have to figure out how to vaccinate you know, 10 million residents in Los Angeles County. Many people have lost their jobs. Uh, so we're gonna to have to talk about reinvigorating our economy when we get through. But I like this Board of Supervisors because all of us bring life experiences and a perspective that I know is ready um, to meet these challenges. These are important things that we have done which will allow us to really meet these challenges head on and serve the people of Los Angeles County uh, in a way that they deserve. I think this board will achieve virtually anything it sets its mind on together. Each of them is experienced and interested and energetic uh, about the issues that uh, they find compelling. And when you put all five of us together, that is every issue that the county is engaged in, every issue. So I think that naming a few things that we'll accomplish will not even get to scratch the surface. Because as I said, we have 50 different motions every week. And that is to move the agenda along to try to improve people's lives and make certain that they get what they need, but also that they get the help they need to help themselves as well. My advice to any woman who is thinking about running for office is to make sure um, they know that being a woman 
is not a liability, it's an asset. For girls and women everywhere, this demonstrate, demonstrates to me that no dream is too big. And that's exactly my advice to all of them. Dream big and don't let people tell you otherwise. Be who you are, say what you think, be kind to other people, be open and accepting, but say what you think and you'll win. Never give up. Uh, there are gonna be many hurdles that you're gonna have to go over. Some, you're gonna trip, but don't let that stop you. Dream big, shoot for the stars, and there is no end to what you can do. I want young women who have that internal drive, who are passionate about an issue, to find their place, either as advocates, impacting policy from the outside in, which is where I started my career, or to be clear about what level of government has jurisdiction over that policy area and run like hell for that elected office um, to be a change agent in the room where the decisions are made.